stop using the 70% rule. Guys, the, the 70% rule has probably have to be one of the worst rules I've ever seen in wholesaling real estate when it comes to 2023. If you are still using this outdated method that every guru and their mom tells you to do, you're going to end up broke. The reason why the 70% rule is a thing is because most gurus think you're stupid. They think you're idiots and they think you don't know what you're doing. The issue is in wholesaling real estate, when you use the 70% rule, when you actually use our formulas, you're too accurate. You're, you're too good at what the actual numbers are and you end up losing out on deals. The honest truth is if I could tell you one sentence why you should never use the 7% rule is because if you use the 7% rule on the average pro, on the average real estate house in the United States, your MAO would be 50 grand, which means every single deal you make 50 grand on at minimum, because that's what the 7% rule shows you. The honest truth is you're not making 50 grand a deal. You're making 10, 15, 20, which means that 70% rule is really not what the true multiplier needs to be. What we're gonna teach you today is exactly the right offer formula, why you should never use the 70% rule and exactly how you should do it in your own market. Now, there are certain markets in the United States where it is true and it is right, uh, but for most people, the 7% rule is probably the stupidest thing I've ever seen. And we're gonna show you exactly today why you should not do it, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the 70% didn't work when I started back in early 2000. And I'm just, it's an old school rule. Yeah. And honestly, it, it's like, if you can buy a, a, a quality Rolex for five grand, buy it. Cause that's the same thing by using the 70% rule. That's like a no brainer rule. It doesn't really help you. Like if you get it $76, take it, but you're going to have to use your brain. You're going to have to figure it out. That is the no brain rule. But like, honestly, it was dying when I started this business over 20 years ago. And we're here to show you why. We're ready to go. We're excited for this one. So the 70% rule, you guys are making offers the wrong way. And I'm telling you, for a lot of you guys, you're getting destroyed. And so whenever you're crying about how I'm doing the formula and oh, my competition keeps beating me. No, your competition beat you. They got way, way, way above the MAO and they still made 30 grand. Yeah. Why is that happening? Because you're following a stupid broke guru who started wholesaling in 1994, where the average home price was $20,000. And now the average home price in that area is 300 and it's like, oh, yeah. oh, I guess we can't wholesale like it's 1994. Like, it's ridiculous. Like, if I said that any other way, people think I'm crazy. If you tried to be an NFL coach and you did a playbook from 1994, it's never going to work. If you did a defense from 1994, it's never going to work. If you try to play baseball like they did in 1994 or basketball, it's completely different. I miss the wishbone offense. That, that's it, right? And so like, if you try to put a car engine from 1994 and pass it off as a new one, it's never gonna work. Why are you guys trying to use stuff from the mid nineties, uh, those methods into today for wholesaling? It makes no sense at all. Try running a, uh, like try to do a gaming PC from 1994 and try to run a new video game on it. Now it, it's stupid, it doesn't work. You've got to change with the times. And the majority of wholesalers watching this have changed because they listen to us, but a lot of you guys aren't. And what we want to do today is show you why you shouldn't be doing the 7% rule, what's the right rule, and exactly why you're off and why you need to be doing it the right way. So let's talk about this. Let's get into it and let's share this all. So first and foremost, the 7% rule sucks. What is the 70% rule? The 70% rule basically states, well, your ARV minus repairs, multiply that 70%. And then my favorite, my, my pet peeve is, then I'm going to minus off my summit fee. Like what? So are you telling me? In wholesaling real estate, I can choose my assignment fee. Like, okay, I'm gonna make 15 grand. Eh, but if I'm gonna make 14 grand, I'm just gonna say no. Like that's, guys, I my what, what's my assignment fee? If I can make a thousand bucks, I'm gonna lock up the contract. If I make a hundred thousand, I'm gonna lock up the contract. Like as long as I make money on the deal, I'm probably gonna get it done. Like I think I think that's a big thing. A lot of the wholesaling real estate, when you learn it, like it's like, oh, you need to at minimum make 30 grand. No, wholesaling deals change. It's what's a win-win for you than the seller. And ultimately, you're never going to know exactly what the thing's going to sell for. So you got to go for a lower price. And so let's kind of talk about the 7% rule now, right? So the 7% rule really only works for houses under 120000 And back when, you know, you started wholesaling real estate, or even when I did seven years ago, yeah, the average house was closer to that 120 grand. So the 7% rule worked. Yeah. But now it's not, right? Yeah, that same house is over 300, 350000 so like, just do the math, 30%, just take easy math on a hundred thousand dollar house. That's what 30 grand. Yeah. And now on a $300,000 house, it's 90 grand. Do you guys understand the disparity? Like percentages get skewed as the numbers get bigger. They, they also do. get skewed when the numbers get smaller. Mm. And so if you don't understand this, I mean, the average home price is more than doubled, if not tripled. 
And if you don't adjust your formulas, you're going to get killed on this roll. Listen, I don't care if you make 1500 or 150 grand on a deal. The number one rule in wholesaling I always look at is what is my risk in the deal? And honestly, if I can mitigate my risk and even make $1,500, which I'm not a big fan of, guys, that's more money than a lot of you are making. And it gives you a head start on it. So you'll always look at the risk reward. I have so many people say, I won't do anything if I don't make 10 grand. You're going to tell me if you put a property under contract, you have a guaranteed buyer and you can make five grand with little effort. Take the five grand. It doesn't matter. Like in the end of the day, you can't get killed taking a profit. The beauty of wholesaling is you can minimize your risk with little to none of your own capital and make an incredible return. And that's why we do it. And that's the theory of wholesaling. It's this 70% rule. You're stuck in a math equation. And if you stick to it, you're probably going to do zero deals. Yeah. 70% rule. So when houses were under 120K, it worked. That's why the rule is there. So like if I told you, hey, you weigh 500 pounds and you need to lose 25% of your body weight. That's pretty easy. That's pretty simple, right? Like, I mean, that, that's like, that's a lot, right? But if you weigh hundred pounds and I tell you to reduce your body weight by 25%, that's like insane, right? Yeah. That's the, how, how you skew large numbers, right? And a lot of you guys are really thinking that like, hey, I want to make about 10% of the deal. But what if your deal is $4 billion? It's like 10% of the deal is insane, yeah. right? That's why brokers, when it comes to like big commercial real estate, they're not getting paid 3%. They're, they're closer to like what? 1%, half a percent, like yep. way lower quarter. for like $400 million properties. So when the property values get bigger, you can reduce you know, the, the craziness of it. And so that's why you don't, you can use 80%, 83, like when the numbers get bigger and here's the, with inflation, the numbers have gotten bigger. So if you're a broker and you're trying to list a hundred million dollar house and you want to get 6% commission, it ain't going to work. Okay. Because prices have changed. Inflation's changed. So the average home price in America is not 120 grand anymore, Mr. Guru. Okay. It ain't the average home price in the United States, $416,000. The people giving these rules are people that wholesaled in like Michigan where the average house to wholesaling is 40, 50 grand or like Dayton, Ohio. Like, yeah, you're still in that world and I'm in that world too, but I'm also in the world of my local market where the average house is like 450 grand. And that's where the majority of wholesalers are trying to wholesale. Mm-hmm. Not, not in like guru land, USA. And so the average house is 416 grand. So if you're trying to use a 70% rule for a house that is 416 grand, either you need to really way over inflate your ARV and really be a little like do it wrong, make it so high that fine, it, I guess it does work, or you actually know how to do it the right way, which we teach you and it, you can actually do it the right way, right? So you got to understand if you actually get good comps, if you use the 70% rule, your average assignment fee, your break even on 70% would be 54 grand. Now, if the average wholesaler made 54 grand, let's use the 70% rule, but they're not. That's insanity. 10, 15 grand. So I'm just letting you know the the reason these gurus are saying it because they think you're stupid. They think you're going to overinflate your ARV and you're not going to calculate repairs at all. So yes, sure. If you, there's the problem with most beginner wholesalers. This is what they do. And I'm going to use an example. Let's do a Mickey Mantle signed baseball. I like Mickey Mantle. If if you go on eBay and look for comps of what signed Mickey Mantle baseball cards are, are, baseball, baseballs signed by him, they're going to sell between two, three, four thousand dollars based on the condition, right? Mm, now, not, but like roughly. Okay. And so if I go out here and I have a Mickey Mantle signed baseball, what, this is what the average wholesaler does. The be way beginner one. This is what the gurus want to do. They see the th- they they see like twenty or thirty of them selling for three to four grand. And they're like, but wait, this one sold for five hundred thousand. Yeah. That's a comp, and that's like his like, you know, two hundredth home run or whatever. They're like, that's a comp. And they're going to see one sell for a thousand and say, nah, that's not mine. And they, they have this optimism in the brain that no, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's this crazy one. And a lot of wholesalers are really, they want it to be half. Him. Of course they do. Right. But the truth is, you know, it, it's the regular three to $4,000 one. And if you can actually be level headed and be smart, I, I think you guys are smart. I think you're smart enough to know what a three, two with the same like type of house will sell. I think you guys are smart enough to do that. Gurus think you're dumb. They, they legit think you're a stupid, just idiot. And they just want your money. They call you stupid idiots behind closed doors. We're not going to get into that right now. But that's what they actually think you guys are. And they think you're going to overthink how much the thing is worth. And so, of course, if you shoot it like crazy, then sure, the 70% rule will help put you back down to reality. But if you actually do your numbers right, and unfortunately, we learn, it's unfortunate for you and got, you and I, in fearlessing.com, we actually have a simple strategy. I'm going to show you guys today 
within two minutes, you can be very close to what the real numbers are. They don't think you're smart with repairs, so they don't teach you it. And honestly, the two charts that we're gonna show you today, you're gonna make about 90% accurate on the numbers if you know what you're doing in under two, three minutes. It's insane, but it's true. And that that is because of that, we don't have to be using that stupid stinking 70% rule. So where are the charts for figuring it out, right? Let's kind of break, let's go into freelsling.com, my freelsling course, our freelsling course. And uh, we're gonna go to the uh, ARV section. And in the ARV section, uh, we have a very simple, easy, handy dandy to do chart. So this is inside of freelsling.com. Everyone should be in freelsling.com. If you're not, you're really, you're, you're behind the eight ball here. If you go to freelson.com, we have a really easy repair chart. So if you want to figure out what your repair should be, honestly, all you need to do is just go to right here. This is the repair chart. So basically what that is, is depending on if it's a light, medium, heavy repair, this is exactly how much your repair should be. If it's under 15 inches square feet, a light one should be 15 grand, a medium should be 25, heavy should be like 60 right? Mm -hmm. Then with the square footage, it just switches up and it kind of changes from here and there, right? What you have to know about that is like, that's what repairs are. Don't go crazy. Don't go nuts. Don't, don't like go, Oh my gosh, how do I do this or that? This is what it is. Like, honestly, like if you want to get the repair costs, you're doing it the right way there. And now what's the formula? Like what's the formula you should be doing, right? Everyone's like, wait, should it be ARV minus repairs? Should it be ARV times and then the repairs? Should it be the, 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 the these gurus have you so messed up? It's crazy. Let me let me talk about this for a second. No one wants to do 80% of what it's worth on its best condition and then take the repairs into account. That is like ridiculously low. That that is not what the average real estate cash buyer deals with. ARV minus repairs is what the property is currently worth. That is what it is. That's what it's currently worth. I I can I will argue with any wholesaler. ARV is what it's worth on its best day. And the repair cost is how much it, it will take this current property to put it into its best day condition, right? That's based, ARV minus repairs is what the house is worth right now. I, I will fight anyone on that. On top of that, your cash buyer is gonna want a discount for doing the repairs on the property, mm -hmm. taking on their risk on buying the house. Maybe you got closing costs on it. That they're they're going to want a discount on what it's actually worth because they have to they have some cost to it, right? And so that's why it is ARV minus repairs parentheses multiplied by a certain amount, right? 70, 80, 80, whatever it is. The ARV minus 80 is the stupidest thing ever. I'm talking because of the the hassle, the, the <laughs> real estate's a it, it's a gamble, right? Insurance, not insurance. They're gonna want a discount under what it's worth. That's why in wholesaling, we sell our deals actually below what it's really worth. Now, when I say it's what ARV minus repairs is what it'll probably sell for on the MLS currently right now. Now, we are, and now we're talking about the, what's the multiplier, right? Well, if you go to freelancing.com, you, yeah, we're gonna, I guarantee it, and I, I don't wanna ramble, but somebody's gonna go on the one-on-one -on -one today and say, what's, how do I, how do I calculate offers? Like, can you go for, I went to freelancing.com. Well, did you go by the offer section? Well, uh, I, I skipped it. <laughs> Come on, you were literally just keeping yourself broke at this point by doing that, right? So we are on the ARV section here. We're gonna go down to my formula. And this is my formula. This, I mean, this is the wholesaling formula. This is it. I don't know what other way to do it, but it is basically for 2023, ARV minus your time set, the 70% rule, yes, if the ARV is below 120 grand. So like a quarter, 10, 15% of all properties out here, yes, they get that 120-ish type. Right, they get that. Now, when it comes to properties with the ARV of 120 to 100 to 200, because the closing costs are more because of all these things, but the profit's gonna be a lot more for the investor, the cash buyer, the rich landlord house slipper, they will accept usually 80% of it. You get to 83% when it comes to this and properties over 300, about 85. Now, every market's a little different. Oh, well, I think we're in the way here, oops. There we go. Every market is slightly different. I, I will admit to you guys on this. So sometimes, you know, your market, it might be 78, it might be 80, right? It might be 65, right? They're all fluid. Like they all, they're all changing, right? Yeah. But this is a good base for roughly where you want to be for the MAO. Now screenshot this. Actually, no, screw it. Go to frillsing.com yeah. if you want, to, you, you want to see it. Guys, keep in mind, it is a formula. It is a guide. 
you're still going to have to use your brain to get in there and do it. So it's if you're using the old school r- rule, the reason it doesn't work is because the numbers have changed and the markets change. And if you understand percentages, they can be manipulated like on either side of the equation you want to do it. So if you take an equation from 20, 25 years ago and you put it in today's, it's insanity. And you've got to understand that. The reality is sometimes you just have to simplify it. That's why we teach you the going for no that's why I don't want you guys to do fix and flip because th- these numbers are given. It's just a guide. Like it can be a lot worse depending on how tricked out you want to do it. So what you always have to look at is, am I going to minimize my risk and how can I maximize my reward? And honestly, yeah. if you get the property low enough and you have a robust cash buyers list, and listen, if you make a couple grand on your first deal, who yeah. cares? You make progress and you go, if someone tells you don't, I had somebody tell us, don't ever do a deal if it's below 10 grand. Now, there's a concept behind it because the smaller numbers are much more of a pain in the butt. But like, you're not going to get hurt taking a profit. Stop trying to compare yourself to everybody else. Go out, create a win-win situation, find a cash buyer that's going to reward you for your services and keep doing it. And the more conversation, the more deals you get, the better you get, the more profitable you get at it and the better service you provide to your sellers your cash buyers and everybody else involved. You cannot just be a robot. This business was never, it is a people person. So we're giving you guides. We have to give you some theory and let you understand it. But when it comes to working on deals, I'll always ask you if you guys do a one-on-one with me or you're in my flip with Rick group, what is your risk? How are you minimizing it? And what's the upside? And if you can make the two work together, that's great. If you're going to kill yourself to make 500 bucks, you probably need to walk away. (laughs) But honestly, some people go, well, I can make 100 grand, but I got to fund it. I got to fix it. I go, you're not talking wholesaling to me. That's a whole nother department. So always look at your risk and then look at what your reward and your time hassle involved in it. And wholesaling specifically was created as a niche to solve this problem. And it's the reason it's not gone away. It is not like Amazon Amazon stores, it's it's not like all the other stuff, all the, the day trading, the, the Forex, all that other crap. It's here, guys. It never changes. Now, the application, how we do it, change. The markets change. I mean, we're looking at half million dollar houses and markets that they were 50, 100 grand five, six years ago. So we want you to change with the times. Wholesaling will always be here. And anyone that tells you it's not going to be here, it means they're going out of business because they don't want to change. You have to change. Get rid of the 70% rule. Exactly. So let's Let's talk about the MAO. A lot of beginner wholesalers have this issue and they think that MAO is what they need to put under contract for. And the truth is it needs to be below that, okay? So it's like, well, your calculation needs to be this, but you guys are, when you're so like nerdy about your, cal- now I'm a nerd too, but like when you're so nerdy about your calculations, it needs to be, a, 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 you're doing that. I'm offering 70 grand below that thing and I'm getting it locked up for 60, 70 uh, grand below the MAO. Cause I'm just built different. Guys, you if you're trying to, okay, I should strive for the MAO. You're going to be striving to stay broke. You need to be making 30, 40 grand on these deals. Go for no. Go for an offer that you know the seller is going to be say way, no, it's way away from that MAO. Nobody is honestly has the courage to go tell you, you got to be way below that offer and you got to actually go out here and get no's. That is the point. You know why they do that, right? Why? Because they're scared of the rejection and they think, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, if the MAO is 180, I'm going to offer 175 because I know inside the head what that seller wants. Listen, your MAO is like a ripcord. Like if you're parachuting and I, I have never, I've never skydived or anything and you get to that, whatever it is, 2000 foot level mark, they're like, pull the cord now. Like if you don't pull that cord, you're going to get killed. This is the same thing. You should never even start near your MAO because let me ask you, Say your MAO is 180 and I offer, I, okay, Zach, 175, will that work for your house? What do you say? No. And then you might've had like 180 in your head. You're going to go, no, it's one, it's, it's 195 now. You guys, just so that you know, when you approach the, the maximal allowable offer, if it's closer than what the seller expects, they move with you. Now, if I offer 100 and he was expecting like, you know, 170, 180, so all of a sudden now they start to chase you. It is a mental game. I'm sorry to give you the truth on this business, but if you chase them too hard, they're like, man, this guy, Rick, really wants this house. Like, he's almost <laughs> at my price now. I'm just going to jack it up a little bit higher. And then the game's at. So when you hit them low, they're like, crap, he's really not interested. Like, and you go, listen, the condition of the house, you know, good luck, but that's my offer. And then you want them to counter. Once they counter, then you have what we call negotiations. But so many of you are trying to get a yes because – 
some of you were taught like realtors, you do not want a yes on your first offer. A yes is like a no to me. So you have to have room. It's psychological. If you guys ever played cards, I'm terrible at it. Like, you know, the bluffers, like they, like a new card player, they're the scariest person in the world to play with because they don't understand the game and you can't even tell if they're actually bluffing. You unfortunately are going to have to put it up and you're going to have to go for the opposite of the MAO. Seriously, guys. So stop stressing over this perfect offer price. I give everyone a two, three minute shot clock on offer prices. I'm at five minutes if it's a good deal, but like that is it. Oh, I get us. Oh, there's no comps. What do I do? Uh, go for a stupid <laughs> low offer. Guys, I let me be honest with you. The lower the price, the better, right? Like, so you're never going to know exactly what a cash buyer is willing to pay for without asking. There's risk to getting your deal stolen. Walk up the deal. Try to see what a buyer is going to buy it for. I, I, you can get out of the deal. Like, I'm not saying to intentionally do that, but you could. And I'm just like, stop trying to be perfect with your offers. You're going to stay broke by doing this. Go and make a very low offer and see what happens. You guys should be going after LAO except for MAO. We, we've stressed about this forever. We've talked about this forever, but do LAO. What's LAO? LAO stands for your least allowable offer. Make sure you go for the least you can possibly get. What's the least off, the least available offer that I can do that is going to make sure the seller doesn't want to kick me out of the house? That, that's LAO, right? What's LAO? It, it's the least allowable offer that you can offer without getting in trouble, right? I found LAO to be around <laughs> 70% of your MAO that you calculate. It's always changes. It's not perfect, but try that. At minimum, just offer 70% of what your MAO is. All right, guys, just take 30, 50 grand off what you're thinking in your head and you're going to have to handicap yourself. So like I'm terrible at golf. I'm like a 25 plus shot type of guy. So like if I come in like well under it, then I have a shot like it's minus 25. I apologize. So it's in the beginning, I used to do that. I didn't trust my numbers. So I just minus off 50 grand and you'd be shocked what people will say to you. They'll say yes. Yeah. But remember the whole point and intent of it is to get a counter from your seller, or you can do it this way, which I promise you will fail. Mr. Seller, what's the cheapest you'll sell me that, sell me the house without kicking me out of here. That's not going to go. Doesn't Translation work. is when you make a low offer or go for no, you're basically saying that without saying it yep. and you don't get kicked out. It's guys, honestly, if I thought they'd say yes to every one of your offers in the beginning, be crazy, but you guys are so programmed. Everybody wants a yes. You want to ask that person, I want to get a yes. You want to get that a on the paper. This is not how life really works. You've got to ask for stuff to actually get it. And the problem is most of you trying to guess what your seller's bottom line number is. I promise you do it. You have no idea. I thought I could read people. You don't know, and especially in the beginning, you really don't know, so handicap yourself. So if you're going to make a $200,000 offer and your your uh, MAO is two twenty five, dollars make it a buck fifty. Start knocking fifty grand off of it. And once you trust that the process works and you understand why you're doing it to get the counter, you'll engage a lot more and embrace it. Trust me, I'm trying to make you profitable, successful, and you can't do what every other wholesaler does out there. That's it. And so I'm not telling you all. So I, I want you to understand when we say about low ball offers, making low offers, it's not that you should go and just say, sell me the house for $20,000. Like, I, I'm not telling you to do that. Give okay? me a dollar. Give me a dollar for the house, right? <laughs> you have to learn how to lowball. There's an art to lowballing. It, there's, I have about five or six type of lines I use to lowball sellers. So when I say lowball, you have to lowball it with the right way. You, you have to come in with the right strategy. All right. So, like, one thing you have to do is you kind of have to set up the shot, right? So I love basketball. If you're going to make a basket, sometimes you have to do a pump fake. Sometimes you have to set it up. Sometimes someone's got to pass you the ball while you're cutting so you can get the alley-oop alley or the layup, right? You have to set up the shot. When you set up the shot, you're more likely to make the shot because you're not going to be covered, right? Same thing in making low ball offers. Yeah, you can just go just throw it out up, but you should probably set it up. And if you have like a signature move, like a step back three, my step back three is my uh, good cop, bad cop. You, the chance of you getting that stupid low ball offer accepted when you set it up goes from 10% chance to about 30% chance. And you might be like 30% chance. That's ten, that's a 30% chance of a $50,000 deal. Yeah. So like when, when somebody says I have a 50% three points like percentage, it's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, right? Because it's three points. What you have to understand is you have to set up the offer. And it's like, how do I set up the offer? You go to freewholesaling.com. 
Go to the free wholesaling. It, there's literally videos of me talking to real sellers over the phone and in person using the scripts. Uh, there's nothing more I can give to you for you to actually learn how to set up the shop. There's nothing more I can do. I show you it. No other real estate guru does stuff like that. It's inside of free It's ridiculous that most people aren't in there, but you got to do it. I feel like I'm selling you something. It's free. It costs zero money. Remember, guys, the lower the offers you make, over, like, this is all statistics. So for my stats nerds, that let's be perfect with their offers. Statistically, if your offers are lower, and I want you to know this, statistically, if your offers are lower, you'll make more money on your deals. You'll make more money per wholesaling deal. So just understand that. Lower offers, lower prices, right? Yep. So it's there's two requirements when you do this technique, okay? And I'm going to promise you, if you break these two, it won't work. Number one, you have to build an incredible rapport with the sellers. End of story. If you don't have rapport, you're just a robot. AI can make lowball offers for you. I guarantee you 101% rejection rate on it because nobody wants to do that. The second thing is they got to be off-market properties. This strategy does not work on MLS leads. Sorry, call up a real estate agent you've never met before and give them a lowball offer. And I promise you, you're just going to hear dial tone after dial tone after dial tone. Because let's face it, if you don't know the person trying to buy the property and they make a ridiculous offer, they don't think you're serious at all. No. Now, if you take the time to learn about the seller, learn about the home and the challenges they're going through and you build it up, you're going to lose credibility when you make that offer, but like you're still going to be on the ship. And that's the idea. You're still holding on the ship and then you're just going to work your way back up because the reality, it's the truth. The property needs a discount to be sold. It's got challenges. You didn't create the challenges. Maybe the seller didn't, but it's that environment that it's stuck in. And if you don't understand that, so if you're going to go on MLS and reach out to agents and make lowball offers, I guarantee you a ridiculous failure ratio because they're on market properties and you built no rapport. But there are ways to do it. So we do have an MLS wholesaling course, FYI, because we do deals on the MLS. We know how to do it, but you have to set it up the right way. Yep. It's like, how do I make half quarters? It's like, I mean, you probably shouldn't, but I can teach you how to, right? Like there's a, there's a science to it, but like, I still not going to recommend it. Right. Half what? Half court, half court shots. Oh, okay. Like, I mean, you shouldn't be doing them, but I mean, you could learn how there's a way to do it the right way. So like you, you can do on the MLS. I show you how to do it. I do them, but like there's better ways to do it. So stop the half court shots. So why, why am I talking about basketball today? Uh, first of all, I love basketball. And number two, I put, I, we're talking about shot clocks today. Basketball. That's what shot clocks are. College it, it, or pro pro. And so <laughs> if you don't know basketball or how it works, when you have, when your team gets the ball, you have in, in the NBA, 24 seconds to shoot the basket. Uh, you have 24 seconds. That's all you have. So in wholesaling, what I'm going to do for you guys is give you a five minute shot clock. Once you have the lead and you're going to calculate the offer price, you have five minutes to figure out what your MAO is. Five minutes. That's all I'm giving you. Why is the point of a shot clock? The point of the shot clock is if there's no shot clock, people just hold the ball. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to dribble it. I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to score. I'm just going to be dilly dallying all day. And it makes the game terrible. There's less, guess what happens when there's not a shot clock, there's less points because people yeah. hold the ball more. Yep. So the point is, if the lower your shot clock, the more points you're going to make. And that, I mean, more contracts, more deals, more money. And so five minutes, that's all I'm giving everybody. You should honestly be at two to three, uh, but five minutes. It's just, the point is you're making a low ball offer. You're going for the LAO. G getting it perfect is not going to do much for you. Get the lowest you can on the deal and that's it. Stop overcomplicating things. Guys, this isn't some Harvard science thing. Like we're just writing up contracts to buy houses. Like we're, 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 no, we're no geniuses here, okay? Like you just don't overcomplicate it. You make it simple. Get a lowball offer, set it up the right way. You're good to go, right? I, you guys are really overcomplicating this. I, I, I will say 90% of all wholesalers overcomplicate wholesaling. We're going to do some one-on-ones today. You're going to see it where everyone's like just overthinking everything. And once you just dumb it down, like I'm just saying like try for dollars, cold call the government, let do blank, blank, blank. Like you just make it simple. You actually do better. Overthinking is going to throw you off. And here's a cool another analogy in basketball. When you hesitate in basketball, when you overthink when you have the ball, when you stress out over it, you don't do better. Yeah, you, especially you, if you pass it too much. Right. You, you flow like water. Like you see LeBron play Michael Jordan, the best basketball players. They effortlessly, effortlessly, when they get the ball, they just take action. No, because I mean, they, they've had the experience, the practice they don't do, but like they just do it. Like they don't overthink things that they, they go. Okay. They, they, they just 
oh, yeah, I'm going to think of it. No, they, they go. You have to do the same exact thing. Don't over call. I, I know it's like, oh, it's, it's a smart and intellectual thing to over. No, it's not. It will not give you any good results in this business, guys. So stop overcomplicating it. The more action you take, the more money you're going to make. That's our, at rhymes. The more action you take, the more money you're going to make. I'm going to use that one. So guys, okay, duck, go duck, do it. <laughs> so that's how you do it, guys. So uh, what we're going to do today is answer some questions you guys have, do some one-on-ones and just help you become the best wholesaler possible. So uh, without further ado, we got some good questions here. Uh, some of these are kind of funny. So I'm going to go through some of these and do it. So uh, Mark King has a good one. So what I want to do is create kind of a flow chart for everyone wholesaling real estate. So okay. Mark King says, I live in Southern part of Pennsylvania. Okay. Can I wholesale in my state? So uh, I have a flow chart. We're going to make a, we're going to make a flow chart so that we don't confuse anyone. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Give me a second. Here comes the flow chart board. Here comes the flow chart board. All right. Good luck with that. It's, it's sad. I have to do this. Don't kill me with that thing, man. I might. All right. So here is the flow chart. All right. If you are in the USA, okay. Is your market in the United States of America? Yes or no. If it is yes, that means you are good to wholesale. If the answer is no, add. So let's, uh, let's, let's think about this for a second. Is my market in the United States of America? Yes. I can wholesale there legally. Is my market not in the United States of America? No, I can't. Do you have any questions? That's just a great illustration, by the way. Any questions? Any any questions? Let me know. I'd I'd love to. I can I can go deeper onto this. So, marking, yes, you can. So it's uh, we get this question all the time. Destroy me! It's so funny. It's you get a lot of clicks on a video when you say something's uh, outlawed or illegal when it truly isn't. So it's we have the same problem with our media, but like we get people that just post these irresponsible. There's a bill being proposed. Just, bills are proposed all day long. They have to be voted on and accepted. And honestly, if anybody ever says, hey, so-and-so, is, it's illegal to wholesale this, ask them for the actual statute, and you're going to hear birds. You're going to hear well, look, crickets nine times out of Let me out talk about this. There are some statutes that regulate parts of wholesaling, but can you legally wholesale there? Yes, you get every market you can legally wholesale. I want you guys to understand this. We have something in the United States of America. It's called the... Uh, what is it? It's called the Constitution. And the Constitution actually has a clause. It's called the contract clause in the Constitution. And I lo- I actually like the Constitution. So I-, I actually did something that most gurus never have done. They're kind of scared. I actually read the Constitution. Read it. And when I read the Constitution, uh, there was a clause in there. that was actually really interesting to me. The founding father- fathers, I think they're pretty smart. They put this. They said, people in the United States of America have a right to form contracts. You can not, the state has does not have a right to stop someone from forming contract. That's a weird one. Huh. That comes from contract law from England from the 1400s, 1200s. The Magna Carta was a contract, right? I don't want to get nerd out on you. But like this basically means that the United States government cannot stop you from forming contracts. They can sometimes regulate it. So like, for example, I, I don't know if this is weird, but like, I can't have a contract to go buy a Tomahawk, uh, Apache helicopter. It's illegal probably for me to own. I don't know why, I'd but like whatever, no right. I can't, I can't own a bazooka legally. Um, uh, that's regulated, but I, I can buy other stuff. Right. And mm-hmm. so like, yes, some parts in there you can regulate, right. That are illegal, but like the contract clause in the constitution makes it very, very black and white. If you can form contracts or not And wholesaling real estate, it's just forming contracts and then selling the contract. It's not even selling. A, it's not even selling. You can form a contract and then create another contract to sell said contract. That contract makes it so you can sell it. Mm-hmm. And so in the United States of America, if you're under the constitution, you can do it. Now everyone's like Illinois, Illinois, you can wholesale. If you have a license, you can wholesale. You can technically wholesale without a license too if you do some right ways and you can go around that law too, but you can legally do it, right? The problem is like, then Gurus make a video, there's a new law in Maryland about, okay, well, the, the law in Maryland is really bad. Like it was like, you can't wholesale unless you're licensed, all these things. And everyone's like, oh, it's over. It's over. And then they said, I told you so. And guess what happened to the law? Some people, they, they went to all the uh, people there and they said, is this going to pass? And they read, they're like, no, that's just the stupidest thing ever. Maryland is a left wing state. And guess what? The bill got withdrawn. So all the gurus crying, but go, go join my brokerage, buy my wholesaling course, MLS, MLS, be an agent, be an agent. And the thing didn't pass because it's even a left wing state. Didn't, yeah. they, they, why would anybody cheer like outlawing what we do for a living? You got to wonder like, why would you do it? Like, 
there's a limit to educating and educating is about giving the facts. Like you got to get rid of the gossip on it. Like, oh my God, like, listen, the fear grabs more eyeballs than anything else. I, I kind of get it, but like, just make sure who's reporting that stuff. What is the ultimate agenda when they do it? Because I uh-huh. don't think anybody in the wholesaling industry wants to see it outlawed. I think like, but it's not 99%. The- but if somebody has got a cure for it, then they're going to understand what the story is and why you're getting it. But basically we're just FYI, wholesaling is legal in the United States of America. We have the contract clause. It's sad to say that you and I are the only person to ever bring up the contract clause to anyone in wholesaling that thinks it's illegal. And guess what? They all shut up basically when I said that, cause they're like, Oh crap, he's right. Guess what? They didn't read the Constitution. No, they're like, they're everyone's all, nice everyone's stuff. everyone's Civic all spots. like, "Oh, I'm a patriot." You didn't even read the Constitution. You don't even know what the laws in the in this country are. So, guys, I unfortunately have some, a Constitution class. I, I will for gurus, uh, but I'm telling you, if you want my charts, I can give you more charts. I have one that says gurus equal broke. That's a good one. That's a good equation I came up with. But I'm telling you, all jokes aside, in the United States of America, you can wholesale. Don't 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 worry about it. Okay. New Yorker says, I'm trying to get this code violation list, and they say they don't maintain these records on a daily basis. Well, New Yorker, I only have one comment for you. This is an easy one. You have, it, have you talked to the person in charge of the code enforcement department? No. I guess They just say they don't do it, and guess what the average person does? Okay, I give up. Yeah. For your request. They, guys, when you get the slightest part of resistance and you just give up. That's what they want you to do. So it's, studies show... If you can overcome two objections, you're most likely to get the outcome you desire. The reality is most Americans, if they're done at one. So read the statement, trying to get the code violation list. They, they say they don't maintain those records on a daily basis. Listen, someone maintains them because how else do you manage the list? How do you keep up with it? How do you do follow up? You've got to just nicely ask some questions about like, listen, I'm not asking you to do it on a daily basis. Why don't you give me a weekly report? How about a monthly report? You got to keep digging. To overcome resistance, you got to beat it with persistence. Honestly, if you're going to give up in one shot, you got to ask yourself what you're doing in wholesaling. This is not the easiest business in the world. The reality is most of you make it very hard. Most of the time, you're going to get resistance when you ask for these lists. But the words they're using, this one's an easy pivot around. Can I just get a weekly report? A bi-weekly report? A bi-monthly report? How about just a monthly report? Heck, how about you give me a six month report and worse, just ask for a year. They have to organize the records, their entire department, all the employees in there. Like you can't imagine running a database, a business without a database of like all the things that need to be accomplished. It's impossible. So you got to be persistent and you just got to keep it up and you got to keep asking quality questions nicely. So they gave you a good opening line. It's like, oh, don't worry about daily. You can just give it to me weekly. Then you give it to me bi-monthly. Give me monthly. Give me quarterly. Give me every six months. You give me once a year. Eventually, they're going to have to come up with one list because who pays for these people's salary? You guys do. But remember, they're just employees. Treat them with kindness. They're just trying to get through their day. They're trying to get their paycheck and just make their day more enjoyable and just try to help them out with it. They know the answer key on how to get it. You just got to find the right questions to ask them. And by the way, you're not guaranteed every list you ask for. It's just not how life works out. So if you ask for six lists and you get three, you're three closer to your goal of where you want to get to. And then you slowly pick away on the last three. So here's the funny part. A lot of you guys will say this. And like, here's what most people pull. They go, they go to the front desk clerk. They're like, give me all the code violations right now. (laughs) And the the person's like, no. (laughs) Right. Like that's, I, I know I'm joking, but it's actually like, that's what they do. Someone will go to the, some, the 19 year old girl at the clerk of the court and they'll go, give me all the probates. I want to list all probates right now. Or I'm requiring a FOIA request right now. Guys, when you're that aggressive, like nobody wants to help more you. flies with uh, honey than uh, listen, vinegar, you right? put out a vibe in this world. And if you're demanding, you're pushy and you're aggressive, you're going to get it right back. You got to be sweet. Like, Hey, I- I'm trying to get a list of all the code violations. I know this is code enforcement yeah. for the past like month. I'm just doing a, I'm doing some independent research. How can I get that information? That's actually a lot nicer to say, right? I, I want you guys to know you're not. Do- and then if it does, if it doesn't work, they say, we don't, we don't carry that information. All you have to say is this quote. Don't say, okay, FOIA, screw you, F you. No, you say, okay, let me just get this straight. This has worked 100% of the time. If I decide I want to cut my grass, you guys are not, and if somebody complains, you're not going to go put me on a list. No, no, you'll be on a list. Okay, well, how can I get 
the, that type of list. Oh, that's our code compliance violation list. Not our code violation list. It's our code compliance list. And the key is to ask them. For it's about help. the language, yeah, right? Ask for help from them. Like that's our neighborhood services list. We don't have a code violation list, but we have a neighborhood. The, the way that they work is different. To say, hey, what kind of list do you guys have when people go out here and you know they don't cut their grass? Oh, we have a we have a we call it the the, the kitty cat list. I'm like, oh, okay, well, how do I get the kitty cat list? And they're like, oh, you want that? Oh, here it is. I'm telling you. You just got to be nice. They'll actually reveal the information to you. They always have, they have a code violation list. Maybe it's a different name. And just, so for example, the water shutoffs, we don't, my favorite, we, I get, I used to get this all the time. We don't have a water shutoff list. We don't like, it, we don't even, we, we don't have the record of it. I said, okay, just for like, and then I always say this, cause I actually know a guy um, that is in like the local newspaper, like mm -hmm. a, like a journalist. I say, okay, just FYI, can I go tell big name journalist guy that nobody has to pay their water bill anymore because they actually don't have a list and they won't shut your water off. No, 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 no. I'm like, Oh, but you just told me that if I don't pay my, so I don't have to pay. You're telling me, I just want to get your name. Your name's what John Johnson. Okay. So John, I, I live by myself. If I don't pay my water bill, you're not going to shut it off. And I won't even put it, be put on a list. No, you'll be put on a list. Well, can I get that list? Well, oh yeah. Can I tell everyone they don't have to pay their water bill anymore? Cause I'm going to tell the manager that, Hey, John Johnson told me I don't have to pay my water bill anymore. You guys don't even have a list for it. They're like, whoa, 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 we do have a list. Oh, how can I get that list? Well, okay. Right? You they, just got to catch yeah. them on a lie and you got to do it in a nice way, but it works. And so when they go, listen, you have to meet with the city attorney to get that. Most of you freak oh out. God. Here's what you say. Awesome. Is he here right now? They're going to know you got to set an appointment. I go, that's fine. What's his first available date? His or her date. Just embrace it. They're not going to bite you. You're not selling the information. You don't care. I'm just telling you, they use it so you re you get rejected automatically. They're trying to scare you. They're trying to make you go away. So when they say city attorney, I says, great. I, is he going to meet me out here in the hallway? Or like, well, how are we going to do this? I've met with the city attorney so many times. It doesn't like just the city attorney does not care. They're, he's just, he's forced. He or she's forced in that situation. They're trying to use everything they can to discourage you guys from getting this list. The reality is a lot of people are asking for the list. And it does become a pain in the butt with them. The key is try to engage the employee with your rapport building skills, just like you with the motivated sellers, they their family, they got dog pictures behind it and ask for their help. The difference is when you demand something, it becomes like an ego. I, you're trying to take something. When you ask for help, listen, when somebody asks for help, it's a completely different story because they feel bad for you. Like, hey, listen, I'm just a guy just trying to like make it here. I just looking to help the neighborhoods out. I would love to get this list. Maybe we need to find a list of, hey, if you can't give me the list of the water shutoffs, can you give me a list of all the water that's on? And then I'll reverse engineer the but ones like, that are off. So, but I like, don't know. I'm telling you guys, sometimes you have to think outside the box. And when you think like only in a box, like you get stuck in that box. Sometimes there's other ways around it, right? And so what I want you to do is just, if they say no, just be nice and keep going. I promise you, all these government agencies have lists. The fire department, I promise you, they have a list of every place that they went to that w went on fire. I guarantee they do. They just don't go will it. Oh, we're just going to go this. Okay, whatever. We're going to make no record. They make records. They have to. They, ha they it's legally funded with have to. Public tax dollars, and for them to get funding, they got to show they're putting out fires and making a difference in the community. So, listen, every department has a list. Like. Yeah, I mean, you guys have a list. You have a list in your CRM of people you're working with. So if you're a one-person operation, how the heck do you have an entire department so guys, have a just, list? I'm just telling you, that's one of my pet peeves. You just, you're just you trying to find an excuse for me to say, okay, you should give up. Oh, oh, oh. When have I always said, oh, I feel so bad for you. You should just give up. Uh, no, I never say that because you should never give up. You should never surrender, never quit. This is your dream. Your dream is to get rich with wholesaling real estate. Your dream is financial freedom. This is your dream. When am I ever going to tell you to be a quitter and a loser and quit on your dream? I never say that. We've ne never once have we promoted that. Never. That is a fundamental value of who I am as an entrepreneur, a wholesaler, and as a person. I never quit. I never surrender. I never let anything knock me down. I never. Why am I going to let you do it? You should never do that. These quitters out here, guys, I have literally watched every single Miami Dolphins game since I was a kid, and we've never won the Super Bowl. Am I going to quit? Never. That's how resilient I am. They won it when I was two, baby. I'm telling you, I, I, don't I haven't give seen up. it since then. So, uh, shout out to Oscar here, uh, Cold Call 500. Appreciate it. Keep it up. Love to see great work like that. Uh, my Braca, Jordan, what's up, man? 
says, uh, what about in a market where offers are ridiculously high and bids are going way over asking? Well, that's a very general statement to say, I, FYI. But if bids are going way over asking, sh- should I get the flow chart again? Should you lowball or not? You should always lowball. Do you want to make more money? Yes. Lowball. Do you want to make less money? Don't lowball. Yeah. And market, you can you can pick your own market too. So I'm in one of the most you, saturated markets ever. It. And yeah. we we always lowball. Here's the thing. If you set up the lowball, so how do you set first of all first and foremost to set up a lowball? I'm giving you secrets inside of realsing.com, FYI. The secret to setting up a lowball is actually two factors. Number one, you have to put them in a in a trap. I know that's the weird thing to say, but you got to put them in a You're trap. You're gonna be cut and clipped from like a uh other channel, and they're gonna like See, Zach is very manipulative. You know, they, they do that. But like you have to put them kind of in a box where they're forced to make a decision. Yeah. Because when you kind of, it's like trying to, this is my best way to do it. Best way to answer it. Like you go, you're going to go out here and try to catch a, uh, a rabbit. Rabbits go way faster than you and I, right? But if I put a rabbit in a box, a very I can probably capture it, right? Because. I don't know, I don't know about that. I'm, because it's in a box, if it doesn't hop, you can actually reach out to it, right? That's why it's easier to go catch a cat when it's in a cage than it is just free. you want to get scratched. When, but still, when it's free roaming, so you have to put you have to put a seller kind of in a box where they have to make a decision. If your seller's like, "Give me your offer, and maybe I'll take it, maybe I won't," you're never gonna get the deal because they're gonna put you in the maybe the the friend zone. They're gonna put you in the eh, maybe. You kind of put an ultimatum on them. It'll do it, but there's right ways to do it. So the ways we teach in freelancing.com is basically, "Hey, Mr. Seller, before I go meet you at the property." Are you ready to make a yes or no decision for selling the house? I don't waste your time or my time. Yes? Oh, I am ready to make a decision. Okay, perfect. So now now they're forced to make a yes or no. Not a maybe, not a, a yes or no. If they say, well, maybe, well, hey, remember, you're a man of your word. I'm a man of my word. You said you were going to give me a decision. And then you have to set up the low ball after that. So that's number one. Number two is you got to tell the seller, hey, you know, I, I was talking to my partner, Rick, and he wanted to buy this thing for like 115000 Oh, no, no. Hey, yeah, that's him. He's crazy. And then you negotiate from there. But they're forced to make a decision, and you can kind of use an excuse for your lowball. You'll get the wholesaling deal. I, you, you have to set up the right way. If you do it the right way, you'll do well. Freelancing.com. Yeah, you're not looking there. to buy every deal out there. So a majority of deals are going to be just like he described. That's not the type of seller you're targeting. Those are retail sellers, mostly with agents and stuff like that. And there are some oversaturated markets, maybe San Fran, Manhattan. A little bit of Miami, but Miami still works. It just all real estate is localized. And from that perspective, if you live in your local market, you have an advantage. If you do a virtual market and you study your numbers and you actively take action, you have an advantage. You all have a choice. Nobody's a victim in wholesaling. If you're a victim, you don't belong in wholesaling because it's never going to work. Yeah, I agree 100 percent, guys. The the victim mentality is over. So uh, PJ Rod. What's up? Says, how many hours do you recommend every week to spend on marketing as a broke college student? Well, this is a pretty easy one. You know, this is always quite, how many hours should I spend marketing? Oh, let's see. One, two, three, as many as you can. You, and, you got guys, 24 hours, buddy. If you're broke. If like, you can do 22, that's amazing. I'm legit telling you, if you're broke, you should not be on Netflix. If you're broke, you should not be scrolling through TikTok aimlessly. If you're broke, going out to dinner. you shouldn't be on Instagram looking at memes. If you are broke, you should spend every waking moment trying to not be broke. I'm telling you, being broke is mentally draining. Working hard is mentally draining. They're both going to be equally mentally draining. But if you work hard, you're eventually going to get rich, and that's going to be less mentally draining. Guys, being broke is a full-time job. I promise you, because you're you're constantly worrying in the back of your head. Constantly. I've been there. It's 16 times still. But like you're constantly, constantly thinking about it. When you're working, you're constantly thinking about it. But over time when you make money, it's the the, the stress of being broke, it, it just it's not there weighing on your head all the time. So that's why it's like if you're starving, the only thing you could really think of is breathing and eating, right? Like like all the only thing you can think of is like eating the next meal. And then when you have food, you have other problems to have, but they're less of problems. So when you're broke, it's like spend as much time as possible marketing because you don't need money for it. And statistically, I'm looking at this because you're a college guy, I guess, the more time you spend marketing, the more money you're going to make. And I'm going to tell you another thing. C's get degrees. I know it's all sexy to be an A plus <laughs> student, but like you don't need to. Like, for example, I was always an A plus student. But I just started, when I started wholesaling, I'm like, well, let me just get B's. Because I got a full ride scholarship. And the only thing for my full ride scholarship when I was taking everything online, when I was wholesaling back, was just get B's. 
And I was like, all right, so I'm going to have A's and then I'll have some classes that are hard as B's. And then the average was like a 3.7 or whatever. And so I was like, all right, whatever. Like, you don't have to be a straight A perfect student, right? And so the question is, how much should you do it? As much as you possibly can, right? Yeah, it's, listen, you got to dig out of that hole. So uh, just don't do what all your other college friends and students do. I'm not even going to get into details of that, but like I, I went to college way too long. Um, I aspire to get C's. I, I, did, I don't even hide it from people. So I just, I was always bored in school. I never quite got the concept and I got a finance degree and I thought I was going to come out like be this, you know, multi-billion dollar company, analyze their statements. It doesn't work that way, dude. They all throw your butt on the sales floor. And most people wind up being a stockbroker and a stockbroker, you're basically a glorified salesperson. Sorry, that's the truth. That's what a realtor is. And for the most part, that's what you are in wholesaling because you're in charge of your entire business. And just understand that. Like it's broke college, honestly, in my opinion, it gives you a huge advantage because I believe the best successful wholesalers come to the ones that are broke. Because if, if someone goes, hey, Rick, I got 50 grand, I promise you in the next 90 days, someone's going to take 50 grand out of your pocket. I'm going to tell you who's going to do it, but someone's going to do it. You're better off starting broke and just talking to everybody and give me a guy or a gal that's broke and is fearless. They'll call anybody. They'll meet with any seller. I'll take that person to my business any day over the person that's got 50, a hundred grand sitting aside because they don't understand how money works. And honestly, if you don't understand it, someone's going to take it from you. So being broke, honestly, that is almost a great fulfillment of becoming a great wholesaler because I find people with a lot of money getting wholesaling, they think they can buy their way in same journey. And honestly, they usually get worse results. I agree. And so I'm telling you guys that make no excuses. I'm, the more excuses you make, the worse your path you're going to be. It drives me crazy. But uh, Josh says, where are your loss control templates and drip campaigns at? Well, go to freelsing.com. You obviously haven't been to freelsing.com. He didn't do it in all caps. You're good. He didn't in all caps. He wasn't yelling at you. He's yelling at me because he didn't go to freelsing.com. Well, that's it. It's in there. Go to freelsing.com. I'm telling you, it's all stinking in there. So uh, let's do some one-on-ones. But before we do it, we got a cool announcement. On next Friday, we are starting our new challenge, our Driving for Deals Challenge. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty exciting. We did it last year, and it pushed a lot of people to start driving for dollars. And what we're going to do is for the entire month of September, every single Friday, on their, on their Flip Their YouTube channel, we're going to do the first uh, week of it. And then all of them are going to be uh, probably on the Zach In channel after, or maybe on the Wholesaling House for Real channel, whatever it is. And then every week, we're going to do it on, on every Friday at 1 p.m., like for an hour or two. Uh, they're drawing free deals challenge and it's gonna be pretty exciting. Uh, there's a sign up link for everyone on there, but just, we don't have it right now. So basically just, it's going to be actually a bonus live stream. We actually don't, um, we actually, uh, don't do live streams on Fridays anymore, but we're going to do a bonus one for you guys for the challenge next Friday. It's going to yeah. be exciting. So if you want to get your first deal driving for deals, I'm excited for it. So it's going to be, it's going to be a really exciting one. I'm excited for it. But, uh, September 1st, it's going to be on there. Pretty exciting. Um, We'll release some of it inside of Philson.com too. But Drying for Deals Challenge is going to start next Friday. I'm excited for it. It's going to be a bonus on top of what we're doing. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. So I'm excited to kind of announce it, talk about it, get it going. So uh, without further ado, let's do some one-on-ones. So the big question I always get is like, how do I join the one-on-ones? How do I do this, right? All you got to do is go here to Wholesaling Houses uh, for Real, our Facebook group. And once you join the Facebook group, there's going to be a link to hop on and talk to us. So it's going to be right here. All you got to do is scroll down, click this. It's featured on the top. And you click here. That's the StreamYard link. Boom! Right there, StreamYard link. And you can hop on, talk to us in StreamYard absolutely for free. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, talk to the people. So uh, to Dwayne Ye, what is up? Oh. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, how are What's you, up, man? I'm good, good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'm actually in PSL, uh, and I did the reverse driver for dollars uh, signs in uh, Fort Pierce, and I actually found a, a couple of uh, motivated sellers in that area. But uh, I'm having some uh, some issues trying to figure out what direction to go in. So uh, I got one lady. Uh, she's been in uh, Fort Pierce about like her whole life. Uh, I was driving by her property and I actually talked to her and she, she was outside and I was putting on uh, the notes on her uh, her door. And she was telling me that, you know, she was thinking about moving and that uh, she had, I think, about four or five properties. And that, um, you know, she, she gave me her information and we talked for like, you know, a good 30 minutes. Um, I haven't followed up with her yet. That was like the other day, but I'm just thinking about how should I go about it uh, uh, and everything like that. And also she led me to another lady across the street who I actually talked to uh, on the phone. 
um that lady said that she wanted like two fifty for a house. Um, let's see, she actually she actually has two houses, uh, and that um, she was thinking about moving because her son's in jail and stuff like that, and she doesn't really know what to do because she has her family in one of the houses, and that um, uh, yeah. But I told her I would call her back and follow up with her because I didn't want to just you know offer her anything like you know offer her money and not see the house yet. So, and I'm pretty new to this. I just found you guys like a week ago. So I'm just, you know, figuring out everything on the fly and trying to, you know, figure out which direction to go in. I mean, this is an easy one. You just, you meet it with the house, you get a contract signed. Then you sell the contract, get some money. Okay. Remember okay. when in the beginning I said someone's going to overcomplicate this? Yeah. <laughs> You're overcomplicating it. it it's you really, are. <laughs> actually, you, you've done the hardest part, which a yeah. lot of people just can't take the action. They, they want to know everything because that's how they were taught in school and taught by their parents. Mm-hmm. So, like, kudos to you for actually going oh, yeah. out and the, talking to people. I'm not saying anything bad. Like, I'm yeah. like, you're getting sellers. Like, you're way ahead of everyone else. I'm just like, you're overcomplicating it, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, you simple. just you just got to figure out conservatively what the property's worth mm-hmm. and what she'll take. Now, like, let me ask you a question: are, are we are we in the avenues here in Fort Pierce? Are we? Uh, are we no. It's, uh, where it's, are we talking? Uh, Don't uh, tell me the address. You're gonna get everybody raining in on Fort Pierce. Hold on, let me see. What area are we talking here? Um, let's see. Because I go to Juanito Avenue and get 50 sellers. <laughs> Trust me. I, dude, just so you know, I started in Fort Pierce. So yeah. I, I know the uh, area. Are, very we, well. are, are we talking a good area? Like, uh, It's by, let me see. Let me type in the address. I forgot which area it's by. Well, if you live in Fort Pierce, you probably know the area. You know, there's. I live in Fort St. Lucie, so I don't really know. Okay. By, uh, is it like by the college? Like, like where are we talking? Oh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's by, it's actually by like Indian River Drive, like by the beach area, by like the Sunrise. Oh, area. Okay, so like, so it's, uh, it's south of Orange. Uh, yeah, it's like off Delaware. Yeah. Okay, it's where all the peacocks are, right? Yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, let me be honest with you, it, it ain't gonna be the greatest area, mm-hmm. but it ain't gonna be terrible. Um, so I think those, I think you should definitely try to get a contract. There are buyers in that area. All right, and just okay. use the go for no method, build up a lot of rapport mm-hmm. and just try to help her out. You know, that, that's all you can do. Mary, you can't make them sell the house, Okay. but if they're ready to sell it and she's got a lot of things going on, you just got to find the right number where it works for you and it works for them. And you don't know what that number is in her head. So stop trying to guess it. Mm-hmm. And when you give her an offer, it's going to be low. At least either she's going to say yes, and then you're a real hero, mm-hmm. or most likely she's going to give you a counter. Go, listen, I can't go that low, but like I owe X amount on it. And, um, you know, this would give me a new start. Yeah. So okay. You're looking for that. Once you get that counter, you have actually entered into what we call a negotiations. Most people are horrified to do negotiations. That's why they want a one off yes, so they mm-hmm. don't have to negotiate. 98% of all. Wholesale deals are negotiated. So go in with an attitude. I know I'm going to have to negotiate. I'm going to give a lower number than what Rick even told me to do. And then whatever she counters, we'll see if we can close the gap and make it work. And then if it's not a number that doesn't kind of make sense, you can go out and reverse wholesale it, find cash buyers and see if you give them to pay more than what you can get her to accept on a price. Now, hopefully you get a low enough price. I'm like, ah, I'm putting this under contract. That makes sense get a 30 day inspection and go out and find a cash buyer to take over your contract. That's it. Okay. Um, would you guys be uh, interested in like JV in this deal? At, at the right price? Yes. Yeah. It's gotta be the right price though. So you're going to, you're going to have to go in, you're going to have to do the heavy lifting on that. Mm-hmm. Continue building your rapport, find her pain points, try to help her out with it and find a number. Okay. Okay. Cause I got, you know, I got two of them cause they literally like right across the street from each other. So I got it. But I'm like, like, both of them. Most likely one's going to want a deal and one's going to probably want a crazy price. It's just how the, the numbers work out. Okay. Okay. But right. you you got to go out and do it. So remember, use the go for no method. Make sure you got a lot of rapport and going in person. Mm-hmm. And then once they counter, now you can find out if you're going to put a deal together. That's, but you've got to set it up. It's like a football play. You've got to run three or <laughs> Three runs up the middle to throw the bomb over the top. It's just this, if you run every time, no one's ever going to cover the pass and they're not going to respect and they're just going to gang up on the line. It's the same thing here. You guys have to set it up. I want to help people out, but like the reality is using the go for no method actually gives you a better experience. It takes the stress off you and the seller and gets you to a faster negotiation. Because if you keep trying to go for a yes, 
It is a moving number and you're never going to catch them on it. So when you reset the expectations and they truly motivated the sell and they give you a reasonable counteroffer, now most likely you're going to do a deal. You just got to put the best deal possible together without getting kicked out of the house. Okay. All right. Well, so kudos cool. for taking the action. Just keep the action and keep going. I know it's a little uncomfortable. It's a lot uncomfortable. It's a lot. <laughs> But this is like an entire exercise. Even if you don't get a deal out of it, you understand the mechanics. I'm like, okay, now I understand how the playbook looks. Mm-hmm. I just got to keep practicing it, learning to talk to people and move forward. So in the next time it comes up, you'll move with greater ease. You'll be faster and you'll know exactly how to respond to their objections. This is the journey of wholesaling that no guru is going to tell you about. Mm-hmm. There is no shortcut. If you pay a guy a hundred grand to learn the business or I teach you for free, you're going to have to do the exact same actions. I think me and Zach proven we have the right steps and the right moves. And we actually do this business currently. And the fact that you're in our local market, kind of all you kind of need to know. Now, if you get a great deal, you can reach out to us, but you mm-hmm. got to go and set that up first because everybody wants to talk about a great deal. You got to get it under contract to show us you have a great deal. Okay. And if I do I have a great deal, what's the best possible way to, to reach out to you guys? Sellmypaper.com or just email it to us. Sell your paper. Sell my paper.com. All yep. right. And just All keep right. taking that action. That's what you need to do. And right. Don't stop because you're like, I'm not quite sure. Just get through it. Even if you fumble through it, I promise you get through it once. It's like your first workout. It's like the first <laughs> time you walked as a child, like that was awkward. Yeah. And then you get through it. The next time you're like, dude, I know how to do this. Like I know exactly how to do it. And that's how you do it. Listen, I failed on so many deals in four peers when I first started. It was embarrassing. But Mm -hmm. I eventually failed forward and I figured out how to do this business. You can't stop when you fail. You actually got to move even harder. So don't stop. Follow through today. Go out and get a contract today or tomorrow and see if you can make it work. All right. I thank you guys. Uh, Congratulations on your uh, hard work there. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Contracts, everything. Freelsing.com. Diana. Oh, hi, guys. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Um, So I had a quick question or just to get your advice on something. So right now I'm going through, uh, I pulled like a list pendants and I got a lady that wants to sell her property. Well, she kind of mentioned that she has no choice but to sell her property. She can't keep up with it anymore. But she, she kind of, she has like no timeline. I'm curious if it's if that is a lead or if I should even continue with her. She she thinks that she has like all the time in the world because she has no idea where to move. Um, but I, I'm curious how I could ask her if she knows that she has a list pendants. Or like- so, well, the, does she know you know that she's in some sort of foreclosure status? Um, no. Okay, so... <clears throat> Do you know how long she's been in uh, like the pre foreclosure stages? Uh, the last, I think like 30 days ago, because I only pull like the last 30 days. Well, I, th- I think listen, like 30 days. It, it ago, is yeah. public record. Yeah. When you get a chance, I did an entire, I've done multiple videos on <clears throat> the stages of pre foreclosure and the, sw- and there's a, there's one that I call the pre foreclosure sweet spot. And this, the, I'm going to sum it up for you because I've been through thousands of these people. When it comes to pre foreclosure, basically they stop paying on their mortgage regardless what the reason, loss of job, if it's right or wrong. And then once the bank gets ticked off enough, usually by the third missed payment, they pi- they file a list pendants, which basically says we're entering into a formal lawsuit. When people get that notice, it's usually shocking, it's scary, and they're served by the local sheriff's department, um, Yeah, the, the court documents. Freaks people out. Nobody yeah. wants to be summoned to court and served. It's not fun. It's designed to make it very intimidating, very overwhelming. And honestly, from that point to the first month or two, that is the best time to get them to make a decision. Once it gets past two months, once they get to the third month, guess what they do? They go, you know what? It's not that bad. I'm not paying the mortgage. I'm not paying rent. And nothing's really happening. So I'm good with this. I procrastinate everything else in my life. And I'm just going to wait because it could be years till they foreclose. Yeah. Then you sit in like purgatory, like wait forever. And guess when they're going to contact you back again? When it's too late. <laughs> when it's coming up the auction in a week or two. Because I was and, curious. Yeah, I was you, curious if they knew or not or if they're just. They, they know. Like there's no they way. You don't, they have to get served. 
and they're got okay. served most likely with a law enforcement officer and it's a public record and they're getting hammered with certified mail and stuff like that. And they have court hearings they have to attend. If not, they they go in uh, default. So I wouldn't even hide it. I go, listen, I, I, I could just see on record here that your property's in a pre-foreclosure stage. What are your plans? Now, I get it. She probably doesn't have a place to go. It's really expensive to live stuff. The sooner she makes a decision, the more options she can have. The longer she waits, she will have little to no options left. And honestly, you can't make people make a decision. If she wants to bury her head like an ostrich in the sand, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. But here's the rule. If you make a decision now, you you should have options. If you wait till the end, you're going to be kicked out by a sheriff's office and all your stuff's going to be kicked to the curb. It's going to be bad. But so every proof foreclosure seller does this. So it's like, I, I you, think you're just new to this because it, every seller is like, well, I have plenty of time. Yeah. And I hate to tell you, at, until the actual end, they're not going to accept it. That's it. Why don't people addicted to drugs accept it at the until it, like it gets really bad? You try try to change the world, please. But like they they won't until like they hit rock bottom. Yeah. You gotta wait for a seller to hit it. Unfortunately, I, you can only help so much. Yeah. And and you keep in mind, don't try to hide the fact they're in the list pendants. Everybody else knows. And you got like, letters and everything. Yeah. yeah. I just say, listen, just you know, what are you gonna do? And just. I don't know. Listen, if if you decide to sell the house now, I could probably give you the best options available. But if you wait till the end, don't call me within 30 days of the auction because I can't do anything. There's yeah. not there's nothing left to do. So you got to give them the take action. The best way you can do is try to sweet spot, which is really in the first month or two once they get filed that list pendants. After that, they, they go in procrastination stage, yeah. usually for up to a year. And then they call you at the end, all panic. There's nothing you can do. So uh, it is what it is. Check out that video. I, I explained the whole sweet spot and I have 20 years of data like to back it up. It's the same thing. You go back 50 years, they do the exact same thing. I didn't know. Just because you don't want to accept the truth of what's happening doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And people do this in society all day long. People do this before they're getting arrested. They're getting arraigned. <clears throat> they're getting indicted. Oh, it's never going to happen to me. They'll never do it. It's going to happen. They took a loan. They signed it. Most likely they're going to lose the house. The sooner they make a decision, the more options they have. And just explain it to them. But like, don't hide the fact, you know, it's in list pendants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question that I, I'll just have a hard, I guess, conversation in a nice way. I, I'm i on like the three hour <laughs> um, talk with her already. <laughs> three hours. Three yeah, hours. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, hey, it turned into another lead because she, her mother also passed away in Bradenton in Florida. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's also a probate. But that property, I feel like it's a bigger lead but because she she wants to get rid of it as soon as possible. So fingers crossed. Okay. I, you know, so move, move on there. that one and just let her know. Listen, I, when you get that on a contract, cause listen, I, I looked up, you know, your house is in foreclosure. Like if you don't do something, you're not going to have any options. Yeah. Do uh, the first the other, one first and then go with that one. Yeah. Remember, you can't make her sell you the house. For yeah. sure. That's yeah. Um, but the Florida one, uh, she mentioned that you have to be 55 plus to purchase the property. Um, I know absolutely nobody in Florida about that area. I don't know anybody in that area. Um, if it did go well, do you guys uh, yeah, so just so you know, um, 55 and older is, I'm just going to let you know, it's a recommendation. They can't stop you from buying it, just so you know. Oh, so the okay. fact you're just doing the contract, I would just flat out ignore it. Because okay. they have to, by state law, I think it's federal law, they have to let a certain percentage. Because sometimes um, people are inheriting a property from their grandparents and stuff like that. And they have to have, I think, a 10 to 15 percent variance. I'm not a lawyer, but mm -hmm. I buy them. I bought them all the time before. I, I, I'm not even 55 now. I'm close. But honestly, you can make a ton of money in a 55 and older. Once again, that's a scare tactic. So you don't go in and buy it. Very people research. Like, what are you going to do? Give me your driver's license, your birth certificate. <laughs> and the fact is... Worst case scenario, you just got to find a cash buyer that will help you with the qualifications on it. But like you can solve that problem down the road. I'm just telling you, like I bought them. I bought them in my 30s. No problem at all. Okay. Did they question me? I'm mean, like, yeah, but like we worked around yeah. it. I go because basically if a corporation is buying it, like is it if you did an LLC, like, OK, is the LLC 55 or older? Like there's a lot of exceptions to the rule. Don't let them scare you away with that alone. Move forward. 
And then if you need help, there's plenty of people that can help you out with it. Yeah, because I, I know nothing about that area. It kind Honestly, of 55 and older is some of my biggest profit deals because people are so scared to do them. Hey, I'm not scared to do it. I hope it goes well. <laughs> yeah, but just like, don't worry, just go through yeah. it. Because okay. you're going to find it through the, pro a lot of people don't verify anything. Okay, that's, that's good to know. And then last, sorry to take up a little bit of time. Last thing, um, for probates, I don't know if I missed in one of your videos. I can't find it. When you fun. you mail you mail to the address where the person passed away, correct? Or am I mailing you them? Can, wrong? You can, so you can use that as a catch-all. Like if you don't want to look up all the like property records and find out who the uh, the uh, PR is, the personal representative, or the executor is, mm -hmm. you can mail to the estate of John Doe on that property, and usually the person in charge will get it. That's kind of a lazy way to do it. If you okay. want to be more precise and get a better return is you need to look up the PR or the executor's mailing address. And you got to get that off the um, court documents. And once you have that name, then you can cross-reference and you have to skip trace them. Look at like truepeoplesearch.com or use a service to uh, find out their contact information. And yeah, then you can I'll mail or cold call them. Okay, so when I mail them, I just mail it to the PR's address. How do they know that I'm asking about so, Diana, you need to go to frillsing.com. We have a okay. free letter inside of it. It's in there. Yeah, the whole thing. The reason why I'm being sure with you is because you're asking a question that could have been answered if you went through frillsing.com. It's all there. Yeah. I promise you. The letter literally, you, you, you haven't read the, read the letter. It's very clear written out. It's a free probate letter for you guys. Frillsing.com. Okay. I know. That's the one I'm using. I know. Yeah. I just but, got confused a little bit. <laughs> read the letter inside of frillsing.com. Okay. For the probate letter, you literally have a download. Click it, download. It. It's all in there. And go after that probate as soon as you get okay. off this phone. Oh, I know. Thank you. Okay. All right. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, guys. Say phone. It's a computer. Guys, go to freeholsing.com. It drives, like, I'm like, it's all there. there. It's all in there. It's all in there. I can't spoon feed everybody. I, I try. I try. I spoon fed him. Like, I'm done. Okay. So, I mean, when he was a baby, he was actually good at wholesaling. So, it's, anymore. guys, it, everything's there. Like, yeah. I love that people are taking action. They're going out and doing deals because honestly, so many of you guys are paralyzed by like researching and studying. Guys, this is not high school. It's definitely not college. It's the real world. And if you want to go out and have a success, go over to freeholesling.com. Check the whole thing out. We're here for you. And, you know, jump on the lives. This is the best way to interact with us, with the comments, with the one-on-ones. And uh, if, if you want more time with us, check us out on uh, Flip With Rick Plus. We do an extended live streams. We actually do four more times on top of this. Uh, and it's very personalized. And the idea is to get people results. So yeah, if you guys, want to do it. Uh, Flip Plus, we have our live event coming October 19th through the yes. 20th. Yes. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, so yeah, if you want to actually get a free ticket to the event, you have to be a member of Flip Lurk Plus. So just so FYI, 19th to 20th, it's going to be under three to 500 people, the fire department said. So it's going to be only that many people. You're going to personally talk to us, be with us, be with other like-minded people. We're going to have a ton of wholesalers doing over 100K a year. We're going to have a decent amount doing over a million a year, verified HUDs that you can talk to a network to yeah. for two days. Like not real just wholesalers, guys, not like influencers. Yeah. We don't have guest speakers coming. It's me and Zach. We're going to just deep dive into your wholesaling operations and we're just going to like the networking is going to be the best there, but like, yeah. it's not just us. We're going to give you verified people making six figures that you can talk to. So literally sit next, behind, sit, sit next to, we'll go out some restaurants. You just sit, sit, sit right next to a couple guys making a hundred K every single year and they can help you out too. And they're going to probably JV. But like I'm telling you 19th to 20th, October, you have to be a member of flip Dark plus. If you're inside of flip Dark plus it's free. So this is a free event. I want everyone to know it's a free event, but it's, I'm only throwing, it's a party, but I'm only throwing it for people inside of Flip Dork Plus. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. So send me a JV deal or just pay the setup fee for it and uh, it'll pay for the, uh, our, I can't our, tell you how much money this thing's going to cost. Yeah, our first uh, event's going to be, it's going to be it's, unbelievable. It'll be pretty cool. So it's going to be in Stewart, Florida. We're excited about that. So uh, flip with Rick, uh, flip, flip plus.com. Check it out. Uh, we're excited for that. On top of that too, is Flip Dork Plus. You get extended live streams. So at the end of this live stream, we actually go for an extra 45 minutes to an hour. I don't think a lot of people know that. At, when this live stream's over, for another 45 minutes to an yeah. hour, I actually talk to people inside of Flip Dork Plus. And it's not a lot. Like there's like 15, 20 people in the Zooms, maybe at most. Yeah. And like I'll talk to all of them one on one like that. Y'all actually are able to DM me 
on our phones, questions, comps, like, hey, can you, I had one like, hey, can you give me the comp on this one? I'm like, okay, MAO should be this. I, I'll literally do that for you guys. I'm trying to get as much as possible before it gets bigger. So like, you know, I always like to reward people that, that are loyal to me from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so what I used to do in wholesaling else is for real was when you were inside, when you were in my first thousand people in that group, I said, I will personally do a Zoom once a week for you guys. I'll, I'll get you rich. And I had only eight people in that Zoom for the first two months. Seven out of eight of those people on the Zoom, I know who the eight people are, made over 100K in wholesaling real estate yep. a year. Seven out of eight of, seven out of, eight of them. As beginners. Because I taught them for free for two months intensive once a week. They got rewarded. So you guys, before there's 5,000 people coming to these events, I'm going to have a couple of small ones beginning because it's growing. You want, you want to be the person who's going to be able to shake my hand and eat a you know, fish sandwich or whatever with me, right? Like you want to be that type of person because I that's it. Because when it gets bigger, I won't be able to do that. So I'm yeah. just like, I don't even like need to tell you to do take it. Take advantage not. of it, guys. Just take advantage. I don't want everyone to be like, oh, I can't. Guys, when- No phone interview, none of that crap. If well, you want to work with us, great. The truth is, for like for the one-on-ones, well, we have so many people in the one-on-ones want to talk to us right now. If you- or when we're on one of my first year of live streaming on YouTube, I had to beg people to hop on. The, like I had one <laughs> one-on-one and it was just like one guy. <laughs> and it was like, you know, Tay's like, Hey, I got a quiet. I'm like, Oh, awesome. I got one guy. And I got like four or five comments on the entire live stream. And I was able like, those people got rewarded. Now it's like, <sighs> right. And I can't get to all the one-on-ones. So like, that's why I'm telling you, get to it in the beginning before it gets crazier. Because this flip the plus thing is going to be something for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And unfortunately with inflation, the prices on flip the plus will go up every single year. It, we had a rise at once and it will keep going up. And whatever one you get, you lock in the rate for the rest of your life because it's pretty consistent with things. Yeah. Uh, so do that. But guys, go to flip the plus October 19th through the 20th. I'm excited. We're going to have that. And then also just FYI for everyone that's not going to be flip the plus. We literally spent a stupid amount of money on videographers and editors and like it's it's close to six figures to throw the entire event so we are going to actually be releasing clips of that live event on the channel so even if you can't join it or you're starting on wholesaling that live event is going to be released on youtube it's going to take a little bit to get it all done i got to pay a lot of money for it but that's going to be exciting for everyone so we'll have that announced and um by next month hopefully by that event we're going to announce the new course inside of flipwork plus it's going to be the 5k a day Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to show you how to make 5k a day JV. Um, that's pretty cool. So my entire JV process, I was making seven, seven figures in wholesaling JV. Um, we're going to break down how we do that and how you guys can do it. Example, stuff like that. But, uh, the reason why we have flip plus for everyone, FYI is YouTube has been censoring me like crazy. Uh, a lot of my live streams for cold calling have been taken down. Um, a lot of the comps I do are being taken down. A lot of the stuff I say, I can't even say half of it because, YouTube is literally like they're removing trouble. the video. I have to yeah. censor things. And like, I did a video of me literally texting, like just live texting yeah. and it got taken down and I have to like re-release so yeah. the video. We can't release all the information so, on here cause it gets so censored. I'm excited about that guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the bonus live stream right now. Uh, join us to plus and uh, we'll see you soon. Also, I forgot. We also give people JV deals inside of Flipwork plus too, but that's for another day. Guys, another day. if you want to do it, go to Flipwork plus, um, Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. I'm excited to talk to you guys uh, Sunday for my live stream. And uh, that's it. Guys, this is Zach Kinn signing out. Rick Kinn signing out. Have a blessed one. Thanks, guys. guys. Later.